Hi, today we're going to be using uh, GenAI on EKS. We will be, we'll be creating images of a dog with stable diffusion using DreamBooth. We're going to be running a Jupyter notebook where we're going to be doing the training using Python. It's going to download the model from Hockey Face. We're going to train the model using uh, dog pics and you can use even your own uh, pictures. We're going to be serving the model using the Ray framework for a distributed way and all of this is done on Amazon EKS uh, using AWS. It's, uh, very easy to set up and then we'll be pushing the model on Hoggy Face and you can do the inference on the website from Hoggy Face. As you can see here, the architecture is composed of different components. This is from the data on EKS project. The two blog posts are available with the instructions um, in there. And what we're going to be doing is using Jupyter Notebook to download the model create an app and, and train the model and then serve the model actually from the app that is running in Juniper Notebook, but that is not scalable. So we're going to be using the Ray framework to do a distributed uh, infer inference of the, of the service where we download the model that we just trained from Hugging Face and do that um, using a load balancer. So with that, let's get started. Uh, the blog post. Uh, first thing is to git clone the repo. So I'm going to go into my terminal, git clone the repo, and then change directory to the uh, example. So if you scroll down, you will see like changing the directory structure, directory, uh, a change to that directory. I already set the Hoggy Face uh, token. So the next thing is to run install.sh. Uh, when you run install.sh, in your terminal, it will ask you for the region. I'll put US East 1, so you can put um, any region that is applicable to you. Hit enter, and then this will start deploying the infrastructure for the demo. This takes around 30 minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and then return. It's finished. Um, by default, this creates two load balancers that are private, accessible only from the VPC. Since this is educational purposes, we're going to switch it to internet facing. So the next theme is uh, run code dot uh, to open the files that we have to modify. So I'll make this here, then find in the Helm values, find the ingress nginx. As you can see, there's an annotation here that says uh, balancer scheme internal. This is for private load balancer. So if you change this to uh, internet facing, then you'll be able to access the, the URL from the public from your laptop, for example. Uh, and the next one is Jupyter Hub. Uh, find the annotation, the same thing that says balancer scheme, and then change this for internet facing. I take into account that this will be like public uh, accessible. So for educational purposes, you can do it. Um, and then you can delete everything. So after those two changes, you can go back to the terminal window, uh, open it here, and then I will run the dot install.sh again, it will ask for the US uh, 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 region, I put US dash is dash one, and then it will take uh, like two minutes to, to do this. So I'll pause and it'll come back. Um, if we go back to the instructions of the block, you will see that the next step is a CLI command to configure our kubectl kube control command line so you can copy that or you can copy it from the output so I'll paste this uh, let's make this a little bit smaller um, and then adjust the, the region so in my case if you're pasting from the blog us is one and then be able to configure our kubectl and then we can validate that the deployments are running everything's deployed in the eks cluster so um do this so you can see the results, I'll move it up. And then you can see that we have our, everything's up and running correctly. Uh, following on the blog post, um, it talks about the different add-ons that are configured. For example, the EVS CSI driver, uh, AWS load balancer controller, and then this NVIDIA plugin that um, an annotates and creates tolerations on the uh, worker nodes. So in this case, as you can see here, it's creating an toleration on the EKS worker node saying that it can would only tolerate pods that have uh, this uh, toleration um, 
put on. So if we go back and you can actually see this in uh, Jupyter Hub, some of the simple examples in the Helm chart, you can see that it has the extra tolerations that you want to set on the pod of Jupyter. It has the configuration for the storage for the Juniper, Jupyter um, no notebook. Um, and then the limit resources of saying like one GPU uh, to configure it. So let's access the um, Jupyter Hub uh, notebook. Um, and also at the top, you will find the username, user one, and then the password or code. This is like hard-coded password, so you have to change it for production, but the, for learning purposes, that's what it is. So if you go back um, to the blog post, you will find the command to get the um, URL for the load balancer. So let me copy this, paste it down, and then I'll be able to copy that into the browser. So let me copy the output of this host name. I will open new tab, log in, in here, and then I'll type user one, and then let me get back this password. I put it here and then we'll be able to log in. If you follow the instructions uh, on the blog post, it will take a while to load. You can verify that it's running a pod um, and then you will be able to open the, the notebook. So to open the notebook, um, go into the doc booth, open the notebook, and then in here you'll be able to run each cell independently with uh, the play button or just put, press uh, shift and uh, shift enter. So let's start doing that. Um, I'll play this. This will verify that it's actually running on a GPU instance. Um, in our case, it's a G5. Then the extra is to set up the environment, clone the example. It's a Git repo uh, example. Then set the directory, change to that directory. And then you can continue on to step 24, which actually is going to be the step that we're going to be training our model or fine tuning our model. So it takes a while, uh, we'll give it a few minutes. If not, I'll stop and then move when I'm in step number 25. Okay, so I'm back on step number five in here. This is where we're going to see our images, where we're going to have our uh, images to train. If we're going to set up a few environment variables in here. And then this is the step that actually does uh, the training. And this step takes around um, one point one and a half hours. So I'm going to start it and then and then return, uh, pause the recording and then come back. So I'll start here. Head and use the model, uh, change the prompt. For example, I can change this, a photo of a dog uh, wearing a Santa, Hat. I can run this. It finished uh, generating the image. Here's the image and it's wearing a, a hat. Uh, the model was also pushed with, uh, remember that we put our token for Hugging Face. It pushed the model to my account. So in this case is here a dog booth and we can also do the inference from Hugging Face. So I can put it here a photo, the same thing, a photo of a dog wearing a Santa, Santa hat, a dog of uh, a photo of a dog wearing a Santa hat, Santa hat, click compute, and that will run a hugging face on their compute, and then give us the image back. We'll wait a second for that. You can see the dog with the with the uh, Santa hat. Uh, with that said, let's move on on how do we use um, the Ray framework to do inference in a distributed manner. Uh, let's move to continue with the uh, tutorial. We're going to use the Ray framework to do inference in a distributed matter, distributed matter uh, using a Ray cluster. Uh, this is not a another EKS cluster. It's just the name of uh, the service inside EKS. We're going to modify this file and put the uh, Hogan's face um, account user ID that we push, uh, we just push the model into. So if we go I open the raceservice.yaml and we change this value for my 
account save it and then we can apply this channel so we'll do a cube cube ctl dash f source uh, service race service uh, we do uh, keep CTL apply and this would create a ray cluster um, it will take 12 minutes to um, get but you can track the progress in this namespace doc booth so it started creating and then initializing so it's it's loading the model into uh, the worker so this will take around 12 minutes so pause here and then return when this is ready check um, our pods are running and then uh, we'll copy the command to get the ingress URL from the blog post and then we'll copy uh, this and then open a browser so let me copy this and put this in a browser so put this in here and then remember that you have to put dog booth slash uh, to get to the ray uh, cluster UI and you can get information here about the ray cluster, the jobs, uh, the applications that are serving. And then if we want to um, serve something, then we can put slash uh, serve imagine and then I already have it, I'll have it here. So for example, you can put something like dog booth serve imagine prompt and then a photo of a dog with a Santa hat and you can put paste this into the browser and I can do that here and then run it and then I'll get a picture like this uh, from from the Ray worker. Um, so that concludes the portion of uh, training and doing inferring on Amazon EKS. Um, give it a try and give us feedback. And remember that reInvent, we have a workshop uh, on this. Uh, so check it out.